I'm excited about the surgery tomorrow. I'm not nervous. Uh, when I tell people I'm going into surgery tomorrow, they go, oh, these horrified faces. And I'm like, well, you don't understand. My hip surgery is different than what I think you guys know about. And, and then I explain what goes on here, and none of them can believe it. My name is Lori Thornton. I'm a patient of Dr. Stephen Murphy, and this is my story. Five years ago, I was uh, a runner, and I was in New York City, early morning hours, jogging, and I collapsed. And couldn't get up, and couldn't leave the city for two days uh, due to inflammation. Back in Boston, I couldn't be active. Um, I couldn't do the things that I, you know, normally tying my shoe, putting my tights on was a, a huge struggle for me. I continued to limp around my store, and I was with a client in the fitting room, and she said, you're limping. And I said, you're right. And she said, are you in pain? And I said, you betcha. And she said, look at this. And she picks up her skirt, and she's got a two-inch incision. She said, come with me. We're going to lunch. We went to lunch, and she called Dr. Stephen Murphy's assistant and got me an appointment. I think all hip replacement surgery techniques were pretty violent from my point of view insofar as we always dislocated the hip either out the front or out the back to do the surgery. In fact, you don't ever have to dislocate a hip to replace it. One time in 2003, when I did the incision in the superior capsule and I was looking down, and I thought, you know, I think we can do the whole operation through this little incision. I designed the funny little zigzaggy cup impactor and the socket reamer to put those implants in through that incision. We were already putting the uh, components for the femur in through that incision, but to make it a single incision operation, we needed special instruments for the socket. Way back, you know, 10 or 12 years ago, minimally invasive hip operations were relatively controversial because traditional operations were extremely successful. And there was a reasonable argument you're going to put more risk into the operation that's not necessary. In fact, if we combine precision with good operative technique, we learned right away that not only did the patients get better more quickly, but they actually were safer and had a lower incidence of problems. It was clear that this was a new technique, going behind the big muscles, the abductors, and in front of all the short rotators and posterior capsule was, um, was a new idea. The other new idea was preparing the femur for the femoral component while the whole femur was intact right through the top. And that's a really elegant step forward. The femur is stronger, it's much less likely to crack, and it also allows for the head to be removed instead of dislocated during the operation. Those were all very new techniques. I knew it was a new operation. I didn't know it was something that could be patented at the time. That didn't really um, become obvious until much later. At the beginning, when we developed this operation, there was only one set of instruments, and there was no way, really, that anybody else could do the operation. So for seven or eight years I was really the only person that was doing this operation. So it was a little bit lonely, actually. Uh, and then when industry came in behind and, and started um, manufacturing instrument kits that would allow other people to do it, then more and more people started to adopt it, which was really gratifying. Uh, and also it's nice to have a lot of people to be able to talk to about shared experiences. With this type of surgery, not only did he take the pain away, he took the arthritis away, uh, which was an added bonus for me because I didn't go into it knowing that that was going to happen. So as soon as this left hip of mine started pinching and pulling and popping and doing all that crazy stuff, I'm like, this is crazy. I should go and get this hip replacement done from Dr. Stephen Murphy and start living a better quality life. The patients recognize not only the good results, but they recognize that the surgeon cares about them and their body to a level that they don't always feel when they go to a surgeon. In addition to optimizing soft tissue management during surgery, we've been working for years to develop methods of ensuring accuracy of component placement. With conventional surgery, half of the socket components are suboptimally placed. Starting in 2007, we developed a patient-specific smart mechanical navigation system to solve the problem. This allowed us to get rid of the traditional navigation systems and clunky, overbearing robotic systems from our operating rooms. I'm very pleased with the project because the system is more accurate, more efficient, and technologically appropriate for the task. So what we're looking at now is the hip expert system, 
This is the surgical plan that's downloaded from our website at the time of surgery. What we do is we take a pre-op CT scan of the patient. That's uploaded to our website. We then plan the surgery virtually in 3D. Uh, so we reconstruct the pelvis and plan where this mechanical smart device will dock to that specific patient's pelvis. Once the instrument's docked in surgery, the indicator rod on the instrument will actually point the surgeon in the right orientation. So I visited one of my friends that was sending a lot of his patients home the day after surgery back in 2010. And I saw some of the things that he was doing that were making a big difference, getting patients up right away off of stretchers, changing the culture within the hospital, making sure people aren't over-medicated in the recovery room, and, uh, and getting the case management people ready to go and prepared for people to go home that quickly. It really is one of the nicest areas. Um, yes. Yeah, you know, it's pretty down by you. Well, so. at the beginning, I wasn't really thinking about short-term recovery. I was thinking about long-term function. And so it was about having the big muscles, the abductor muscles, minimally affected by the surgery, which allows for short and long-term recovery. Preserving the short rotators and posterior capsule in the back would maintain good stability of the hip joint so we could allow people to freely move immediately without having to worry about what they did or what position they got into. If we prepare the patient preoperatively as well as we can, we do the surgery as well as we can, physical therapy, anesthesia, postoperative care, if we do all those things as well as we can, we're just supporting the patient to do as well as that patient can do. And if that patient does well and they can get up and go home the next day, that's fine. Beginning about 10 or 12 years ago, I allowed people to put as much weight on their leg as they wanted right away and also put their hip in any position right away. The nice thing about that is that there's nothing to learn about what not to do after surgery. Even if someone doesn't have a hip dislocation after an operation, if they're told don't do this and don't do that, they're worried about not doing this and not doing that the entire time. The biggest thing that we're working on now is making precise surgery something that everybody can do. And that's why I've been focused on being able to develop technologies that can be used in any OR very quickly. Many of the patients that have already had a hip on one side and they know what's going on, if it's a well-executed operation and they feel well, people can often go home the day of surgery now. We're just trying to create an opportunity for people to do as well as they can. But I don't have any set expectations about who qualifies for this or qualifies for that. We're just hoping people do well. So it's 10 to 7 and I arrived at the hospital this morning at 5.30 and uh, as uh, compared to my last visit for my right hip uh, five years ago, um, I was here for 24 hours. So it's kind of incredible what this hospital and Dr. Murphy are doing. Couldn't be happier.